So welcome back to DIY Willie and today, well, we're gonna wrap up the install of the timing chains and the timing chain tensioners on the 2008 Nissan Frontier 4.0 V6 crew cab, four x four, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, the truck is done, it runs great. Uh, it was a good job, uh, very time consuming and uh, there was a lot of parts involved. Um, definitely get yourself a book and uh, uh, follow that book. Uh, you, you need torque specs anyway. I know you can download the uh, factory uh, service manual online. Um, I, sh I could have done that as well, but I hate having all those stacks of papers and running the printer through and printing everything. So I, I just bought a book and it was easy. Um, uh, I noticed in the first part, I watched it again last night, and uh, I'm putting the second part together right now. And in the first part, I, I, I didn't even show why we did this job to begin with. <laughs> I didn't show the stupid little tensioners. So uh, I put it in a video, pre uh, previous video, and uh, I'll put a link to that video here somewhere. And then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little snip from that video, a little clip from it, and I'm gonna put it in this video in the beginning uh, to remind folks of why we did this job in the first place of those little stupid little tensioners. So uh, sit back, enjoy the video. It's long. I'm sorry. And, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. All right. Bye. So uh, these are the the guides for the secondary chains on the camshafts. And uh, this is the one that I think was making the noise because the tensioner has a, like a little piston that pushes up on this piece and uh, the chain guides across it. Now, as you can see, this thing is pretty destroyed. This one was for the left side. Now it wasn't broken like this. It was in one piece still but uh, it, it was it broke taking it off. But you can see it wasn't quite as far gone as that one. So this is that little piece that was pushing through there and the chain was actually guiding on this. It was actually traveling across this piece. It was sticking up through that hole. So this is no good. Let me show you the new piece. Here's the new piece. And uh, it's quite a bit different. Now, if I read right, Nissan did some changes to these pieces for 2010. I might be wrong, but I believe I read that somewhere that this is an upgrade over that piece. So, uh, you know, this truck has almost 200,000 miles on it. And, uh, well, it shows. It always ran great. It never gave us a lick of trouble, but, you know, we might as well do some maintenance on it. This is actually the first... Uh, real maintenance job we've had to do on this truck So anyway, here's that piece the new piece you can see it's got a little hole there for oil to travel through and uh, lubricate everything and uh, Yeah Let me show you how that tensioner goes It goes right there. See just like that Anyway All right, another day. We got the VVT actuator back on. I don't know if I said this before. The new valve cover on the left side is in. New PVC valve is back there. I've got, I've got the silicone on the bottom of the oil pan or the top of the flange of the oil pan, however you want to look at it. And it gobbed it into the corners and make sure it seals. Chains are all tight. We're gonna put this timing cover on. I've got the silicone all around the edges of the timing cover everywhere that it needs it there and there kind of a gooby job the more the better I guess and uh, it'll all squeeze out anyway yeah looks good timing covers on I'm gonna go ahead and put all the bolts in the places where they go uh, they're specific places I've got a as you saw way back at the beginning, I have a cardboard template of kind of where everything at and it's numbered in the sequence that it gets torqued. And uh, so I know which bolt goes where. I'll go ahead and put all the bolts back in, but I won't torque them yet. I won't torque them until the uh, silicone has a chance to kind of to set up. Uh, I might do the bottom ones just to make sure I get them in the right holes. But other than that, the rest of them don't get torqued. All right, so I've got all the bolts in. As you can see, 
around that involve holding down the timing chain cover. There's some other bolts still missing that mount the air conditioning compressor, uh, the power steering, the alternator, those bolts are still there. Uh, these bolts don't get tightened yet. These are for accessories that attach on here. We're not worried about that right now. And uh, yeah, now I'm just gonna go ahead and start to uh, torquing down the bolts. Now the big 10 millimeter bolts, they get torqued to uh, 46 foot pounds in the order of one, two, three, four, and five. So we'll torque those. And then all the six millimeter bolts get torqued to 108 inch pounds. And in their exact sequence, I don't remember what it is. I'll have to <laughs> have to look at the chart to get the sequence right. Um, I, I did put them in and I put them in with the socket, just turning it by hand. And it did squeeze out the silicone, but I'm letting it rest a little bit, the silicone, before I torque it. I want to make sure that it's uh, good and, and pliable when it, when it goes together and makes a good seal. All right. So I'm going to wait a few more minutes and then I'm going to start torquing. And we'll get these bolts down. All right. So all the bolts are torqued now. And uh, these uh, smaller six, uh, six millimeter bolts get torqued to 108 inch pounds, like I said, and the larger 10 millimeter bolts, bolts get torqued, man, I can't even talk. And the larger 10 millimeter bolts get torqued to the 41 foot pounds. I was wrong, I think I said 46 earlier, but it's 41 on the larger, there's five of them. Uh, there's the, the torque pattern right there for the book. So next we're going to put the VBT covers back on. I've already put the new seals here on both sides. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of oil here. On the cover we have an O-ring here that's been replaced that seals up inside here. And then we'll put a dab of silicone about 1 8 3 8 all the way around. Uh, that way it seals here. We don't get any oil leaks. We got these pins to align it. And then we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five bolts to go in. These bolts are all the same size. It really doesn't matter what order they go in. But the torque sequence starts here on number one. And uh and goes. Let's see, it's uh one, two, three, four, and five, something like that. Much like changing a tire. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I gotta get my silicone, it's in the garage. I'll lube this up. And we'll put a little, like I said, a little grease here, or a little oil, and we'll put the covers on. My next project, I gotta get to that valve cover right here. I've already changed that one. I need to do this one. So I need to take the coil packs off and uh, take all the bolts out. There's a lot of bolts, there's 10 bolts holding it on. And go ahead and take it off and uh, clean the area and prepare the new valve cover to go back in and uh yeah put the cam sensor back in then i can run the wiring harness back around start reconnecting the back of the engine put the injector harnesses back in check the uh click in the injector harnesses there's a crossover tube that cracked when i took it off so we've got a new one we'll put that crossover tube back in and uh, yeah we're, we're good to go we got to change this over to the new valve cover i believe and uh uh, plug in the VVTs. This VVT comes off, by the way, to get this valve cover off. I think you could wiggle it back, but I'll take it off. I got new gaskets anyway, and then I'll clean it up like I did the other one. So, yeah, we're getting there. Anyway, so this silicone's all got to dry. It's it's going to be there. All this stuff's got to dry um, before we can add any water to it. But like I said, we're a long way from adding water to it. So uh, we're a long way from starting it. So by the time I actually get to that point, this stuff will be dry already tomorrow. Okay, oh, and we did change the the uh, uh, front main seal down there, so that's new. That comes with the timing chain uh, recommendation kit. The kit they, they give you all the seals for it, that's one of the seals they give you. That's good because the it, the other one was, was bad. It wasn't leaking, but you could tell that it was bad. So I'm going to double check the torque on the bolts, the two bolts on the bottom. Hey, you know what? Let's take a look at those. Now that the... Uh, other bolts are all torqued. These are tight, but they're not torqued yet. So now I'm gonna go ahead on this one 
and this one. Check the torque spec and tighten those up to specification. I got the coil packs out. I labeled them two, four, and six for the uh, uh, right side cylinder bank. And I don't, I don't want to mix them up. It ran good. I don't want to mix the coils up. So uh, they are pretty much the same coil, but we'll leave them like this. I dig the other side the same way. So there is a sequence to taking the valve cover off. These things are made of a composite material and they will crack. You know, they're, they're especially if they're old like this, had some heat cycles on them, you know, they could become brittle. So there is a torque se uh, sequence and you remove it in the opposite torque sequence. So starting with 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, taking the bolts out in that pattern the, and it come off. And then when you put it back in, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 and 10 in that sequence. Um, I'll show you when I get it off and I get the clean up done on it and get ready to put the new ones on, uh, what I do to, to get it on there, all right? Good morning, YouTube. This is another day of uh, timing chain installs. Now I gotta apologize. Uh, when I get busy, man, I, I just start working and putting things together and forget about the whole filming aspect of it and what I need to share, but uh, Anyway, just to get you guys caught up, I don't know, I don't remember uh, if I showed this at before in another uh, part of this video, but the main timing, front timing cover is on. The VVT covers are on, both of them, and sealed. Uh, the tensioners are installed, both of them. The new uh, uh, thermostat housing is installed. Both new valve covers are installed. And the VVT actuators are reinstalled with new gaskets on both sides. There's the valve cover for the other bank. I've got the wiring harness ran back around. Uh, it's plugged back into the cam sensor, the oxygen sensor, all the coil packs, all the, uh, the uh, injectors are plugged back in. Um, the grounds are put back together from the wire harness. I mean, it's coming along. Next, I'm going to do the accessory drives and uh, put the access accessory system back together. Oh, I need to uh, put the studs back in the, the fan. Uh, I don't know what you call this fan hub, I guess. I need to put the studs back in the fan hub before I get too much stuff in, in there. Also, the new uh, crossover tube from valve cover to valve cover goes here and right here. And I, I guess it's common. Here's the old one. And it, it cracked. I don't know. Can you see that? It cracked real bad when uh, trying to take it off. So, I mean, it's hard as a rock. You hear that? I can't show you how, how stiff that hose is. I don't know why it gets so much heat, maybe. But here's the, the new hose. There's a good part number for it. This is the crossover hose between the valve covers. And I'm gonna go ahead and install that now. Put you guys over here. I hope it's not too dark. It's really light outside today. And, well, I just hope it's not too dark. Wow, that is amazing how, how much more pliable this one is. Look at that. The old one can't bend like that. You know something? Wow. That's crazy. All right, I'm going to lubricate it, put it on. A little bit of uh, the purple good stuff we put in here. Just stick a little bit in the hose just to make it easier to slide on. There we go. Put the purple good stuff away. Now let's see if it shows that. Let's put this on. This is the crossover tube between valve covers. And it just slips over. There's no clamps or anything. It just slips on like that. Slip it on to the stops and you'll be good to go. Just like that. There, that's easy enough. There we go. Everything looks good up here. We still got some electrical connections, but that goes on the parts that aren't 
in yet installed so we'll get it this one i don't remember what that one was i think this might, this might go to the intake can't remember we'll see when i get going but yeah there's my little update this video is going to be way too long i'm afraid but there's really no way of of making it shorter unless i break it up into pieces and i don't want to do that i just want to show from start to finish so it might be a 30 or 40 minute video i don't know but i hope somebody watches it it's not really a how-to it's just a, a showing you some of the process of doing it maybe it gives you some pointers some tips now i did anytime you go to put grounds back on it's always a good idea to take some sandpaper and sand everywhere the ground goes like this bracket this wire grounds to the bracket so you ground you would sand where the bracket goes on both sides including the the mount on the engine block sand it so it's fresh aluminum sand the bracket so there's no oxidation on it bolt it in tight and then sand where all your grounds go make sure that they're all fresh and the engine will appreciate it because you know they get corrosion on them they get uh oxidized and corroded and and they'll lose contact so it's always a good idea to check all your grounds when you're putting them back and just make sure they're nice and clean and so everything will work good all right i guess uh i guess i'm going to the zoo now i don't know might be done for today i was hoping to have it running this sunday but this is friday by the way good friday but uh i might i might take the time and go to the zoo let's see oh since i've been out here working hard on this truck my son did me a good favor he took my samurai and he put some new bfgs on man look at those look at those bfgs they're beautiful great tire nice beautiful even the spare five five tires overall what a kid man gotta love him look at that he put bfg tires on my samurai he needed tires i was planning on doing it anyway but now damn it's done and they look amazing but that's not what this video is about <laughs> let's get back to the truck he runs bfgs too out in the desert and they they do do awesome they do great love those tires anyway that's not what we're here to talk about today okay so uh i'm gonna end this part here i know i've got more work to do and i'll uh bring you guys back when i get a little bit further ahead all right everyone uh man i don't even know what day this is anymore on this install these timing chains uh this could be like day 14 or day 15 i don't know something like that it's taken a long time like i said i don't have a lot of time to work on it but uh for the most part it's back together and uh well now i'm gonna go ahead and and now i'm gonna go ahead and flush the radiator right here um you know as you knew i had that black liquid out of there and uh <laughs> i'm a little concerned that it might be the transmission fluid mixing with the with the uh coolant in the radiator but when i took the lower radiator hoses off down here the fluid was perfectly shiny beautiful fluorescent green and when i did the heater hoses over there again it was a perfect shiny fluorescent green it was beautiful it was clean as could be so i don't understand how the coolant in the radiator could be black and the coolant in the engine is green it's all the same system when it's closed and tight and the and the engine runs the water pumps through both you know so i don't understand how the black water didn't get to the engine but it's not there the engine was clean everywhere that it i opened up the coolant so uh <laughs> i really don't know what to say i'm gonna go ahead and, and do a little flush of the radiator and uh if i get good clean fluid out of that oh i may take the dipstick off the transmission and uh, look at the condition of the fluid on the dipstick if it's black then it it's going to get a uh, uh a change of fluid in the transmission and filter and i would i would probably change the radiator because of that but if it's perfectly color you know 
whatever color red or whatever it is in the transmission if it's not other than black if it's some other color I'll, I'm gonna leave it alone uh, I am eventually planning on doing the coolant I am eventually planning on doing the coolant uh, and transmission delete where you take the transmission coolant out of the radiator and putting it in a and putting it up in a cooler up here in the front so I'll eventually do that I just don't have the parts to do it yet so we're gonna give it a shot like this uh, like I said for the most part the engines back together I took and cleaned up most of the parts you know shined them up a little bit you can see a few of them got it that's actually brand new um, we got a new alternator down there which is an expensive piece let me tell you but it's 14 volts 130 amps so it creates a lot of power for this truck uh, we went ahead and put a new one because it's so far down in there and it was out and uh, the old one looked pretty old it had a lot of dirt in it a lot of sand from the desert so uh, just to prevent any problems we put a new alternator uh, it's a factory nissan alternator and it was expensive um, it's down there and uh, a lot of hoses have been changed as we talked about and new valve covers new valve cover gaskets uh, miscellaneous o-rings and seals inside new crank uh, main seal on the front i mean it's it's got a lot of work on it so uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh, run some cool water through the radiator and let it drain out let it just drain for maybe i don't know 10 or 15 minutes and uh and then i'll uh see the condition of the water if it continues to be clear uh or if it gets clear and stays clear, then I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it all back together. We got new upper and lower radiator hoses and uh, we'll go get some new coolant and then we'll fill the coolant system up and we'll do the oil change. And, uh, oh, I gotta install the plenum. Something's missing, right? I gotta put the plenum back on, connect the necessary uh, lines and, and cables and hoses and whatnot to that. But I mean, we're almost there. It is getting there. Uh, I should be starting it tonight if uh, if I run into problems with the radiator or something I'll start it tomorrow I don't care as uh, long as we solve the problems and I can get another radiator if I need it um, whatever that may be so uh, yeah that's my little update for this video well it looks like it's clean the water coming out of the radiator did have a little bit of greenish dark green color but I mean it, it went immediately clear and uh, I'm just letting it run now, I'm sure there's probably another way to flush this but this is what I'm doing I've got water coming into the top I've got the hoses up on the bottom the water's going out I had the drain plug off for a while and I was flushing it with the drain plug out and making sure I got everything everywhere and then I plug the bottom hose outlet and I let the water come out through the top right here, kind of cleaning the inside of the radiator. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice and clear. Everything looks good. It's kind of how it should be. So uh, I honestly can't explain how I got that dark, dark, almost black fluid out of there. Maybe it's original fluid. Maybe it's just old. You know i don't really know but uh hey it looks good now look at that i've got this drain pan i got liquid in it. i think it's brake clean or something or carb clean and look how the sun's making it uh evaporate like that you can see the mist i hope the camera catches that that's kind of cool i hope it doesn't blow up or catch fire or something yeah. uh-oh this should give you an idea of what's going on nissan value advantage radiator <clears throat> so uh, yeah we did find a little pinhole in the radiator when I went to flush it I'll show you that right now there's a little pinhole right there I don't know if you can really see it but it's there and uh, well I don't know if a tool hit it while I was working on it I don't remember doing that but you know it's been it's been several days so 
been more than a week so it could have happened i don't know it, it might it may have been there already that could be a reason maybe why the coolant was black maybe there was a stop leak in there and uh when i flushed it the stop leak came out and the hole appeared i don't know that's a good story to think about and uh, possibly could have been happening maybe that stop leak then they're making it black not not uh uh, the antifreeze or, or something like that at all or the transmission fluid. Maybe it was stop leak. That's why it's black anyway <clears throat> It had a hole and uh, Well, we got a new one Here's the new one. It's on its side right now uh, When you get the new one, you do have to change over the brackets from the old one They go on the sides. There's one on both sides that support the radiator with these little grommets on both sides and the condenser hooks up to the radiator here on the back side as well so uh, it's always recommended when you have a condenser like this and the radiator so tight um, and it is difficult to get it out you know so it's always recommended to put a piece of pl uh, cardboard over the condenser and uh, kind of protect it as you move the radiator in now it's a good idea to do the same thing with the radiator to cover it because any little thing that sticks out like these little screws or these little bolts for the fan or these little plastic clips anything that sticks out can damage the radiator and bend the fans and you know and then if you bend enough of them it will make it to where the radiator doesn't work quite as as efficient as it should so this is a brand new radiator so i'm definitely going to be taking my time to get it in there i am going to cover the condenser um i did while i was waiting for the, my uh uh, for the radiator to get here, I did wash the condenser and you can see through it. That's good. You couldn't see through it before. There was a lot of sand, a lot of glamis, a lot of dirt in there, bugs and whatnot. So that, that's good. And this is the external transmission cooler that I knew this cooler was here, but I, wasn't, I, I thought maybe it was engine oil. I didn't quite know what it was. I know this one is probably power steering. And this one is transmission. I followed the lines and they go to um, into the radiator. So what I think is this line goes to the radiator, then it comes out of the radiator and goes to the line to here. And then this goes back to the transmission inlet right there. So I can bring this hose to meet up to this hose and eliminate the uh the radiator transmission cooler part and just run this transmission cooler and that might be the good thing to do um i can always add a small fan to this later and tie it into maybe like uh the air conditioning switch so that it runs with the air conditioning or uh, i don't know i could find a way to activate it uh, I could just make it turn on with a key, whatever, you know, there are a lot of ways to make a fan turn on. So uh, I'm thinking about just bypassing the radiator inlets altogether for the transmission, just running the transmission cooler and possibly putting a fan on it in the future if it gets hot. So yeah, <laughs> we got a hole in the radiator. Now. This is Nissan's value uh, brand. They guarantee it for a year and uh, it sells a lot. Uh, it's probably a third of the cost of uh, the original radiator. I think the original Nissan part with Nissan stamped in it is about 800 bucks. And this one was like 270. So, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive either. And I priced many, uh, I priced many radiators at the local parts stores and uh, checked online on a couple of them. And this one is competitively priced with all those others. And uh, it was in stock at the dealer. So like I said, they guarantee it for a year. I'm sure it'll last longer than that. It looks identical. It looks exactly the same. It just doesn't have Nissan stamped on it. Good morning, YouTube. Another wonderful Sunday morning, and we're still on the frontier. 
but I gotta say, look, it's getting better. It's getting more complete, looking more like an engine every day. Everything is there. So uh, next, get the plenum back on, connect everything back up, and uh, refill all the fluids, change the oil, and we'll be good to go. We'll give it a turnover and see if it'll run. Did I get those timing marks right? That's the big question. All right, I got to get these tape off marking the coils too. All righty. Just wanted to show where I'm at. I've already started cleaning up the plenum. And uh, I'll get it put on. Yeah. All right. See you in a bit. Okay, here we go. Look, it's all put back together. Well, except for the grill. Uh, batteries back in I've got the uh, no spill kit to fill the radiator and uh, get the cooling system charged or you know re refilled and recharged I've changed the oil there's the old oil the new filter up there that's what they had in stock for this truck at the store we were at we'll use it for now uh, we usually use the mobile one and the royal purple this time we're using the mobile one uh, High mileage well anyway so uh let's get in there start it up and see how it does oh, 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 oh. it's alive it's alive now we just got to get it let it warm up get up to operating temperature We'll check, take a look at our coolant. You can see it circulating now. Make sure we get it filled all the way back up. And uh, once we take it for a drive, I've got to uh, check the transmission fluid. Make sure we got enough because we, you know, we we had to change the radiator. We found a hole in it, so the cooler drain and the uh, radiator hose. I went ahead and bypassed the uh, transmission cooler inside the radiator and just ran to the external transmission cooler. Hopefully that'll be good enough. If not, I'm going to add a fan to it to help cool it. Uh, sounds really good. You can see the bubbles coming. We just let the engine warm up. And, uh, yeah, I like it. It's good to see it running. What a job. Well done. That's another DIY Willy project. That was a real pain in the butt, but we got it done. We stuck to it. Took us a little over a week to get it, but we got it. I need to put some more coolant in the radiator. go guys it's running can you believe it so much work to get to those chains and it's quiet it's really quiet nice you can see the bubbles working their way out turn the heater on heater's on that way the coolant will go through the heater core through our new hoses we put in we'll get all the air out of the whole system those hoses were all fresh and replaced yeah new alternator down there on the bottom spinning and yeah, everything looks really good and no apparent leaks it's really quiet super quiet they're watching the bubbles. I've never used one of these before. I usually just pour it in and keep an eye on it as it works, but this is really convenient and handy. I like it. I'm glad I bought it for this job. One of the many tools I put the money out for this time. It seems to be working good. You can watch the air come right up through there. And then it's got a little 
got a little plug you put inside if they're still cooling in here and, and this is done you can put this plug in and take it out and it won't spill any then you can uh, save what coolant you have so it's a pretty neat setup i like it i'm just gonna let it do that for a while and relearn all its sensors make sure everything's plugged in and uh <laughs> oh man i'm excited oh it's been a great project guys and all you just stuck by and watched it it'll be a long video i apologize for a long video i i don't know maybe i break it up into two parts i'm not sure yet but it's running all right i'm gonna let it warm up it's kind of boring just watching it let it warm up and continue bleeding out the air and uh, we'll get back when it's done okay. so just gonna wrap this video up right here uh the truck is done here it is it's been running now for about a week it's been yeah maybe a week maybe two weeks uh all is good the engine's quiet and uh well it needs a wash we had some rain the other day so uh yeah <laughs> we have a big box of parts left over and uh, those are all just old parts but uh i'm not gonna save any of those parts um, i do have a core charge on the on the alternator and uh I'll be taking that back here soon. Um, the new radiator seems to be working perfectly and moving that transmission line out of the radiator and into the cooler that was already on the truck to begin with has been perfect. Um, I did have to add a little bit of fluid where I drained that hose and took out the radiator because it did come out. Um, oil change, everything went well. Like I said, the truck runs beautiful. So uh, another great DIY Willy project successfully completed. I uh, hope you all enjoy watching it. It's pretty long. Yeah, it was a good install. Did take some time, a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. Uh, the video touches up on, uh, you know, some of the key points of, of removing all the interferences, you know, getting the accessory drive out of the way, radiator, fans, all that kind of stuff. Um, getting to the chains. I uh, replaced the water pump, timing chains. Uh, man, it was a lot of work. You know, we did the valve covers. And we saw that the heater hoses needed change. We changed the heater hoses. I mean, it's all good up there. I did find a leak in the radiator, as I explained in the video. So we changed out the radiator and uh, refilled the coolant. And it's been about a week now, or maybe two weeks, since the job has been done and the truck has been perfect. Now, there is another problem. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. But, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with the job. And I believe anybody with some time and some just some general knowledge... Of, of mechanics or just a, you know a, a good drive to do this type of work can do it it's easy um, very particular get yourself a book you know you can download the factory service manual you can print it out I went ahead and bought a book because I didn't want to take the time to to uh, download it and then print it out I hate having sheets and sheets of paper I'd rather just have a book that gave me tech torque specs you know, it's very important you get all the right torques and some of it's in, inch pounds and some of it's foot pounds so you got to know, know where to use each one. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, it was just a great job. I'm so happy that we did it. Thank you for those uh, people that were watching my videos and heard the timing chain uh, whine, they called it. I didn't hear it. And it definitely was a problem. As you saw, those parts were worn out. Um, the black coolant in the radiator, I don't know. I changed the radiator anyway. way. For other reasons we had a leak so i changed the radiator and the coolant's green now so we'll see if it stays that way uh we moved the transmission lines out so hopefully there won't be any issues um yeah another diy willy project successfully completed and uh well here we go and we'll move on to the next uh what i was saying about this truck is it now has an AC leak. Now, whether that AC leak came from this work where we moved the compressor, I don't know. Uh, my son was saying that the AC was getting kind of warm uh, before we did this job, so most likely it was losing the Freon. It was leaking the Freon uh, before we did this. So uh, now we're gonna uh, do a Freon check, see where the leak is. Not right now, of course. That'll be in videos down the line. And uh, go ahead and try to fix the AC system. Hopefully there's no major problems with that. I have O-rings. Uh, we tried. We did try to recharge it, and it recharged, but it leaked out in about three days. So there is a leak there, and it's a big leak. Uh, 
generally I think they're either at the op the connections where the O-rings are or at the pump at the uh, compressor so uh, either way I wish I would have changed it when I was there because I already had the compressor off but hey, you never know I did change the alternator because of that reason because I had it out already might as well just put a new one in there so I should have done the AC compressor as well oh well I don't have a vacuum pump to draw a vacuum to properly uh, to recharge the AC system but I can get that they're, they're not that expensive I'll get it and I'll go ahead and perform that uh, job repair the AC and get it back up and running uh, in future video so if you haven't already please subscribe uh, give it a thumbs up it was a big job I hope it helps somebody and uh, well the truck runs perfect I do have some parts left over the old parts <laughs> I'm gonna keep the chains I think they look good I'll hang them on the wall maybe I'll do something with them I like them and uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming. And I always come back to DIY Willie, where we do a lot of fun stuff like working on Nissan Frontier timing chains and mini bikes and Samurais and Chevy Silverados and who knows what else we may come up with. So uh, thank you and I'll see you next time.